Hi everyone, I'm Egfer and today I'm going to show you a couple of RS Nor latches for bedrock edition. These are my design. They are one wide, they're tileable, they are completely silent and they're pretty tiny. So um, if you don't know what an RS Nor latch is, stick around and I will explain that to you. And there are a couple of interesting properties about these ones that you probably need to understand. But if, you, if you're sure you know what you're doing, that's all there is to it. You can go off and build those. But um, hopefully you'll stick around and uh, I'll explain a little bit more about them. Okay, so let's dive straight in. Okay, so let's have a quick recap on what an RS Nor latch is. Um, this is the typical small RS Nor latch design that you will find out there already. And um, basically it's a couple of droppers and one of the droppers has got an item in it. That's read by a comparator here. And when I press one of these buttons, it gets swung across the other dropper, the light goes out, and I can send it back. So essentially, an RS Nor latch has got two inputs, and one of them you can kind of think of as a, an on switch, and the other as a reset. But we are not going to be looking at this one. We're going to be looking at these two. So they work in, in pretty much exactly the same way. I'll put a button on the side to make it easier for us to do. So you can see this torch here is lit. This one is off. I can press the button and they swap over. So I've got a, a, a positive and a negative output here. I can press this button again as many times as I want. Nothing happens. But when I press the reset button, it comes back down here. And this one's exactly the same. Um, and I'll explain to you why I'm showing you two of them in a moment. So you can see that just switches between the two. And if I spam this one, nothing happens until I reset it. So if you're thinking, hey, Egfer, why are you showing me a new one? You've just uh, shown me the one that everyone uses already, and it seems perfectly good. Um, then, yes, it's, it's great. Uh, there are a couple of things to know about this one, though. So if I press the button and it comes on, Apart from the button noise, that was silent. But if I press it again, listen, you can hear the dropper sound. So if you had this inside a contraption, uh, it wouldn't necessarily be completely silent. Okay, so that's one thing. The other thing is that um, I put the buttons on the side, so it's not one wide tileable. If I want to um, make it one wide tileable, these buttons are going to have to go down here. Uh, or in reality, it's probably going to end up being torches or something or observers. Um, and it's not necessarily a very practical place for them to be. And then the third thing about this is that if you think about the signal strength that's coming out of this, um, it's not very high. But in some cases, that signal strength is not going to be enough to do what you want. And you can end up having to put an extra repeater or something like that. Or maybe a block with a torch on it to make this work the way you want it to work. So um, that's the other thing. You know, mine is completely silent, probably the button noise in this example, and it will give you a signal strength 15 out every time. OK, there are some extra things you need to know about um, how these work. And the main one is uh, what I'm going to show you now, which is I've got this little observer set up to give a, a one tick pulse. It's going into this repeater, which I'll set to one tick as well and that will be powering the piston here. So if I turn it on, you'll see that the one tick pulse will actually give me a clock here and not an RS door latch, which is not what I want at the moment anyway. Um, if I set this to two ticks, so I'm putting a two tick pulse to this, then it's absolutely fine, okay? And that's true at the top and at the bottom input. So in both cases, you need to have at least a two tick input, okay? So next, what I've done is I've actually uh, tiled these. And I want to show you the reason why you might use pistons at the top rather than solid blocks here. So the solid block one works fine. I can press a button here, light set up. I can press the button over here, turns it off again. And indeed, I can choose more than one thing if I want. And then reset them. Um, with the piston one, though, I can do something a little bit different. I can have a reset which goes all the way along the top and resets all of these together. So if I press a button here or two, 
I can then reset all of them at once. If I try to do that here, this is what would happen. So I'd have my redstone at the top. But you see already it's come on. There's my reset. Um, if I now want to turn on one of these, nothing will happen because all the other torches are staying on. They power through the solid blocks. They power this redstone line, which is a reset. So it's always constantly reset. Because pistons are transparent blocks, that doesn't happen over on this side. So I can do them all individually if I want. But I can have a global reset just here. And of course, there are ways of doing it with this one as well, but um, it's just a little bit more complicated. So that's why you might want to use pistons at the top. Okay, so I want to give you a quick um, show of a, a system I built recently which uses this mechanic, just give you a flavor of it. So let's go and have a look at that, which I think is over there. So here we are. This is my button operated selector panel. And the idea is that you've got uh, a number of choices. You press a button, it lights one of these lights up, like so. I've actually got it connected down using some wireless redstone to the circuit below. So when I press this one, you can see the one below changes as well. And uh, the pole point of this is it uses exactly the circuit we just looked at. So here I've got my pairs of pistons. I've got my reset line going across the top. I've got my torches here underneath and along the top here. And I've got an extra set of torches here, which I'm using as my outputs. So, you know, this is really, really um, compact way of creating um, this selector panel. And that's the reset button, which as you can see, basically sends a signal through here, through here, through here, and along my reset line. So that uh, then turns off all of the lights. So that's it. That's an example of how you might use this. There's lots of other cases, um, memory circuits, and, and lots and lots of other things. So let your imagination go wild. Uh, find ways to, to use this in your builds. And I hope you have a great time. Cheers.